Hello everyone, my name is Kathan and today we will be discussing the problem distinct numbers from the sorting and searching problems of the CACS problem set. Let's begin. So let me read out the question for you. You are given a list of n integers and your task is to calculate the number of distinct values in the list. Input is uh, we are first giving an integer n, the number of values that we have and the second line will have n integers uh, x1, x2, so on till xn. Now we have to output one integer number of distinct values here. Now the constraints here are uh, like very modest and goes as high as 2 into 10 power 5 and xi can be as high as 29 so it is an integer range. Now this question uh, like the surface is actually very simple uh, and it is actually very simple but let's see like uh, let's try to learn a couple of things from this simple question. Yet, so let's move to the iPad and uh, try to understand this question. Now first, uh, let's take an example test case to understand what the question is trying to ask. Uh, let's say n was 5 and we were given elements 2, 2, 3, 3 and 2. Now what you have to return is uh, what are number of distinct elements in this list. So this is the input, 5 size input and the elements here. So n is as high as 1e5 and uh, xi which is each element is as high as 1e9 integer range. So in this, what you have to output, what are number of distinct elements in this list. So you, 1 is 2 and 1 is 3. So we'll have to output 2. Fine. So how do you approach this question? Now if you want to find the unique elements, what do you do? Uh, what data structure uh, comes to your mind straight away? Uh, which will be a hash set, right? Or a simply a set in C++. So or an unordered set. In a way, uh, you want the elements to be unique. So what you'll do is uh, you'll simply uh, throw all the elements in the set. Set or unordered set here, right? Now which one do you choose? Uh, Frankly here, uh, okay, uh, let's go step by step. That is pretty simple. You want a uh, number of unique elements uh, in the list, right? So what do you do? The What data structure uh, s only keeps unique elements? Sets, right? So you have two options. Either you have s the normal set or unordered set. Now what is the difference between these two guys? The difference between these two guys is in set, you have all the operations, that is insertion, deletion, which are login, right? Insert and deletions, updates, all are login based operations. And in unordered set, unordered set, all the operations uh, will be order of one, right? The more concrete term is amortized one. So in a way, we, on an average, we try to keep the time complexity of insertion, updates, deletions to be order of one. And this guy is login, fine. Where n being the size of the uh, uh, array or list. So what is approach? Pretty simple approach, right? So you are given input. So what you do is uh, you just go through all the numbers in the list. You go through all the numbers in the list and you just dump them in your set. Just do set dot insert or whatever your programming language provides. Set dot insert of num. And you know that by the property, the set is only gonna store unique element. So in the end, you can just return set dot size or whatever size function your programming language provides. So that's about uh, this question, right? Pretty simple. Now. If you use, let's talk about the time complexity. If you use the set version, uh, where the time complexity of insertion, updates, and deletions is log n, what is the time complexity? You have n guys, and for all of them, you're doing insert. So it will be n log n, right? So if you use the set version, then the time complexity will be n log n. And if you use the unordered set, then for n operations, you only consume order of one time. So in that case, uh, so in that case, the time complexity will be simply order of n because for all or n elements, you just consume order one time. Fine. Now the idea lies behind uh, because uh, this unordered set behind the scenes actually stores uh, all of them in an array. Okay. And there is this concept of hashing involved if you want to read more about it. And uh, inside this set, it is actually, it actually stores the elements in sort of a balance binary search tree. Right, so if you want, if you're interested in learning about the internals of set and unordered set, uh, I'll maybe attach a description, attach in the description a blog for you to read because I guess uh, it's it will be too early if I discuss the internals right now. But uh, there's a reason uh, why this is login and why this is one. Simple reason is behind the scene there's an array and behind the scene there's a balanced binary search tree. That is a tree which is of height order of login. Fine. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that's about this approach. Uh, do you have any other approach that can come to your mind? So the question is done and dusted. Uh, this will pretty much work because both of these uh, fit in the time constraint, right? Because uh, n was as high as 1e5. So you can submit anything which is uh, less than n square. So n log n, n log square n. 
So does any other approach come to your mind? Uh, see, uh, what you're doing is in both of these approaches, uh, you are using some extra space with this order of n because you're storing each one of them into the set. Now in the worst case, all the guys can be unique. Uh, so you can store them in a set. Uh, what naturally does come to your mind? Uh, now, don't tell me <laughs> this is a sorting and searching section. So let's just sort it. But sorting uh, is actually very natural, right? So what you can do is uh, if you have elements like this, 2, 2, 3, 3, or maybe let's just write like this, 3, 3, 3, 2, 3, 3, something like that, right? So if you just sort it, you will have elements like this, right? 2, 2, 3, 3, and 3, right? So 3 times 3 and 2 times 2. Now, does uh, looking at this sorted version help you simplify the problem? Indeed it does. What you can do is, uh, okay, this guy is unique, fine. But then this guy is unique. Uh, so what I'm trying to say here is, uh, let's say we had multiple elements and after sorting, it came out to be like this, two, two, three, three, four, five, five, six, six. So after sorting, of course, uh, the array will be sorted in increasing order, or you can say non-decreasing order. Now, what you can do is, uh, okay, the first guy is anyway distinct guy. Then the next guy will be, which is not equal to the previous guy. Then the next distinct guy will be, which is not equal to the previous guy. Which is not equal to the previous guy. Which is not equal to the previous guy. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you can have an approach like this here as well, right? So, if you want to find the distinct elements, what you can do is, you can sort the array, right? You can sort the array, and then uh, you can just run a simple loop and just check if a guy is not equal to the previous element and uh, update the answer. Of course, you start, uh, you just start from the second guy. You start, initialize your answer with one. So what I'm saying is, you initialize your count with one and then you start from the second guy, second guy. And if array of i is not equal to array of i minus one, array of i minus one, uh, then you can update the count. So this one approach, uh, what is the time complexity and space complexity of this approach? You are sorting the array. So sorting, if you don't know, the C++ sorting function uh, will actually consume order of n log n or any other like in Python, I guess it's the simple sort, right? So that also consumes order of n log n only. And uh, so n log n and there is no extra space. So this is, you are not storing anything, right? So you are not creating a new arrays and all. So the space complexity will be order of n. This is also one approach. And yeah, I mean, uh, that's about uh, this question. Uh, let's go to the coding part then. So if you have understood uh, the explanation till now, uh, please comment understood in the comment section of the video right now. And let's look at the code. So the code here, uh, first I'll show you the approach based on set. So we take the input in size of the list. Then we run a loop from one to n. Uh, we take the input, store it in the set. And finally, we know that set, is, set will have unique elements stored. So we can just return the set size. Time complexity. It's a normal set here, right? So every operation, insertion, deletion, updation is going to cost uh, order of log n. So the time complexity here is simply for n operations, log n time consumed. So n into log n. Space, uh, here order of n I'm saying, but you can argue we are storing the input in the set. So it can be order of n. But maybe if you were provided an external list, then you had no other option but to store it. So that's why I'm saying it order of n. Now what about the sorting based approach? Uh, we do the same thing. We store the guys in a vector. Right? And then we sort the guy. Now you can write it for loop where you are checking whether a guy is equal to the previous guy or not. And you can do that. But there is one simple approach using C++ STL. What you can do is, uh, this is unique function. So what this unique function does is it just simply clubs all the unique elements to the left side of the array. And it returns an iterator one past the last unique element. Right? So one past the last unique element. So if you want to get uh, the size of the unique element set, you can just subtract last guy from the first guy, right? So if you have the one past the last guy, you can just subtract into the zeroth guy and uh, you can get the size. So this unique is gonna club all the unique elements on the left side and return an iterator pointing to the one past the last guy. So if you want to find the number of unique elements, you can just do position minus v dot begin. As a matter of fact, like how about uh, you try implement this unique function, which is not very difficult thing. You just have to run a single for loop. So maybe I would love to see your uh, implementation of unique function in the description box of the, like you can say in the comment section of this video. Time complexity here, uh, we are just sorting the array. Rest of this things is happening in place. So order of n log n. Space complexity is definitely order of n because even this unique modifies the array in place. So that's about it. Uh, but there's one little thing I want to discuss. We already discussed in the explanation part that uh, you can actually use a unordered set as well. 
and uh, it is supposed to give you you can say order of one per inserts right so the total time complexity here if user not let's say it can turn out to be order of n right but if you do that uh, so if you instead of set use another set uh, expected time complexity is order of n right because you're doing an insert and each insert is causing order of 1 and if you go and submit it on cscs uh, website you'll get it yearly <laughs> then you'll scratch your head how is order of n slower than order of n log n why is this happening now why this happens is uh, it relies on the idea how are these guys implemented now first let me come to the set now the set is internally implemented as a balanced binary search tree in a way uh, all that matters to you is the height of this tree is always log n so whenever you are searching you will not go more than uh, log n levels right so more on that in like more about the implementation details in the description box the attached block but that's why uh, you are definitely sure when you are doing insertion updation or deletion in a set or you can say even uh, the map normal map it will not be more than order of log n it's fixed it is not more than that but in case of unordered counterparts that is unordered sets or unordered unordered map this look great on the surface and which actually are like they are uh, they are wide applications uh, and you can say software engineering because they give you order of n time uh, per operation what is the problem is uh, the internally how they are implemented is you have a array only and how they are able to provide us that constant time insertion updation deletion is uh, when you give it an element to store what it does is it runs a constant time function uh, which is called hash function and it maps to one of the array position now what is the fundamental flaw with this approach is uh, people can give you input such that you can say all the n elements are mapped to a single position right so if all the n elements are mapped to a single position right so all the n elements have to be stored in the single position array of course you will have to store as a vector vector or more internally like this used as a stored as a linked list in behind the scenes but more importantly uh, if multiple elements are mapped to the same place when you're trying to fetch it or even when you're trying to insert it you know that if you want to insert in a n size array it is going to consume you order of n time right so this is the reason like uh, why this unordered counterparts on the surface they have a amortized time complexity order of 1 but what can happen is uh, if multiple guys are mapped to the same position when you try to insert it or update it the time complexity per operation can be as high as in the worst case order of n which is bad <laughs> right so that's why you should not use this unordered counterparts in competitive programming because uh, there can be input sets easily developed which can uh, you can say make the the worst case time complexity of unordered set unordered map hit in a way the time complexity per operation will be go as high as order of n which is bad right so then that total time complexity will shoot up to be order of n square which definitely you cannot pass because the constraint was simply 1e5 so yeah uh, that's the reason uh, please always use sets and maps don't prefer uh, like don't prefer unordered maps and unordered, unordered sets even though they are great they have their own use cases but don't use them in competitive programming right so i mean yeah that's about uh, this question i hope i hope you liked it if you did uh, please give it a thumbs up and i would love to see your solutions in the comment section in your programming languages and uh, yeah i'll see you in the next one then